Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to control a server motor using an STM32 microcontroller. My name is Ali and you're watching Circuit Gator HQ. To get started with the code, open up STM32 Cube IDE and click on create a new STM32 project. Then go to board selector and type in the part number of the microcontroller that you are using. Then click on the microcontroller and then click on next then here it says project name you can just save the project as servo and then click on finish and then click on yes the servo motor is the only thing that we're going to be connecting to our microcontroller so you can click here on pin out and then clear all the other pins since we're not going to use them and then how we're going to control this servo motor is that we're going to be using pwm to control the position of the servo motor so the first thing that we need to do is to come here where it says timers click on timer 2 and then click on channel 1 and then click on PWM generation channel one. And then for the clock source, you can select the internal clock. And then now we need to set the correct timer parameter settings for PWM generation. If we can take a look at the servo motors data sheet, we can see that uh, we need a PWM period that spans over 20 milliseconds, which is 50 hertz. We need to configure our timer to be operating at 50 hertz. Before we can start doing that, you need to come here where it says clock configuration and then take note of the frequency of your microcontroller. Mine is currently set to run at 84 megahertz. You can change this value by changing the value in this block here to set any frequency that you would like. So I'm just going to leave mine at the maximum 84 megahertz and then go back to pinout and configuration. Since our microcontroller is running at 84 megahertz, for us to be able to generate a PWM with a frequency of 50 hertz, we need to choose a prescaler value and a counter period value. The prescaler value that I'm going to use for this video is going to be 200, but I'm going to subtract one because we start counting from zero. And then the counter period value that I'm going to use is going to be 8,400 sub minus one, because again, we start counting from zero. If you wanna know how I got to this two values to achieve a PWM frequency of 50 hertz. There's a video in my channel where I teach you everything that has to do with PWM generation for STM32 microcontrollers. In that video, I show you how to do all the correct timer calculations to achieve any frequency you would like. Another thing that we need to do is that we need to come here where it says system core, click on system, and then here where it says debug, we can just enable the serial wire. And then we need to go here where it says RCC, and then here where it says high speed log, we need to enable the crystal or ceramic resonate. Take note that the PWM generation pin that we're going to be using is pin PA0. Click on Ctrl and S to save, and then generate the new code and switch to the new perspective. On the main C file, scroll down to where it says user code begin zero. We're going to create a function that we're going to use to set the servo to any position that we want. So to create this function, you can just say void set servo and angle. And then we need to give this function a couple of arguments. The first argument we need to add to this function is the handler for the timer. So we're going to say timer underscore handler type define and then add htim then we're going to add the channel and the angle that we would like and then the last one you can just call it angle what we need to do inside this function is that we need to map these positions to pulse with signals uh, zero degrees is going to correspond to 210 counts and 180 degrees is going to correspond to 1050 counts. How I determine this is that my microcontroller is currently running at 84 megahertz and I chose a prescaler value of 200. So before we can add the uh, period counter value, that means our microcontroller is going to be running at a frequency of 84 megahertz divided by the prescaler value, which is 120,000 hertz. If we take the reciprocal of this value and convert it to microseconds, we see that our timer is going to be running at 2.38 microseconds. Then we need to determine which second correspond to which position in our servo mode. If we go back to the data sheet again, we can see that the duty cycle has a specified range of one to two milliseconds. 
after trial and error i found out that this one to two milliseconds only gives us a 90 degree range of motion it doesn't give us the full 180 degree range of motion so the values that i found to be working best to achieve a full range of motion was 0 0.5 milliseconds for zero degrees and 2.5 milliseconds for 180 degrees so we need to determine how many counts we would need to achieve zero degrees and 180 degrees you take the 0 0.5 milliseconds and divide it by the 2.38 microseconds to get 210 count and then you take the uh, 2.5 milliseconds for 180 degrees divided by 2.3 microseconds to get 1050 count so if you go back to the code here now we understand why zero degrees matches with 210 count and why 180 degrees matches with 1050 count to map these values together we can just say u in 32 underscore t is equals to 210 and all this divided by 180 and then after determining the angle that we would like we need to send out that value to our servo motor as a duty cycle from our pwm to do that you just say underscore underscore hal underscore tim underscore set and then the value that we would like to send out is the pulse length once this function has been created we can then scroll down to where it says user code begin to and then here in user code begin to this is where we need to start the pwm so we're going to say hal underscore tim underscore pwm and then hold on control and space for the completion and we're going to use this one that says pwm start so double click on it and then double double click on timer 2 and then we need to specify the channel for timer 2 when that is done, we can then go to the main while loop. And then here under where it says user code begin three, we can use the function that we created and then set the servo motor to any position that we would like. You just need to copy the function name, paste it here, and then specify the timer and the channel that we are using, as well as the angle that we would like. So if I type in 100 here, and then we build our code to check if there are no errors and then we see that there's a couple of errors here so we can just quickly fix them so here there's a typing error it's supposed to be u int and then here it's supposed to be just handle not handle and to demonstrate the servo motors full range of motion here in the main one loop i'm, I'm going to remove this and this hundred and replace it with a variable called angle and then i'm going to create a for loop while this angle is less than or equals to 180 degrees we want to increment the variable by a value of 10 then we're going to add a small 100 millisecond delay okay so this is to sweep the servo motor from 0 to 180 degrees i'm going to create another for loop so that we can sweep the servo motor from zero from 180 degrees back to zero degrees copy this one here and then paste it below change this to 180 and this to zero and then we're going to now equate our variable to 180 degrees and then while it's greater than zero degrees we want to decrement it okay, then we can build our project again to see that there are no errors and then after it finishes building with zero errors and zero warnings you can just connect your microcontroller to your laptop the servo motor only comes with three wires so connect the ground of your servo motor and the ground of the microcontroller and then connect the red wire of the servo motor to a voltage output on your microcontroller this can be 5 volts or 3.3 volts depending on the power specifications of your servo motor and then connect the signal wire to the pin that is associated with the timer that we are using for my code here it's pin pa0 and then click on this green play button to upload the code select on debugger click on st link click on scan click on apply and then click on ok to upload the code and then when the code has been uploaded we can see that our servo motor is able to go from 0 to 180 degrees and then return from 180 degrees back to 0 degrees if you found this video helpful or if you have any questions or any feedback please let me know in the comment section below please also note that there's a paypal donations link that i've added to the description of this video so if you'd like to help the channel grow by getting more components and equipment feel free to leave a donation thank you so much for watching this video i will see you on the next upload